And so, friends, good evening and welcome once again as we continue our journey into looking at this last week of Jesus' life, the journey between triumph and tragedy. Last week, we looked at the feast that Jesus has with Mary and Martha and Lazarus before, in John's account, he enters into uh, Jerusalem. Of course, we celebrated the entry on Sunday, so it's kind of, the order's a bit mixed up, but nevertheless, that's where we find ourselves. This evening, we continue in chapter 12 of John's Gospel as we look at uh, the Greeks who come, come to, to the disciples wanting to see Jesus, but more about that in a moment. I invite you to turn with me to Scripture as we look uh, at John chapter 12 from verse 20. John chapter 12 from verse 20. Uh, John tells a story like this. He says, Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. So they said, We would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered, Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Let's spend a moment in prayer. And so, Lord God, as we continue journeying with Jesus through this time, we are mindful of the different emotions that Jesus was going through. We are mindful probably of the different things that people were saying to him and demanding of him and expecting of him. And we remember those Last words we read, Jesus took himself off and hid. Lord, sometimes we would long to do that. But we pray that even as we hide, we will discover your presence in the hiding. For we pray this in his name, the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, uh, it's such a, an interesting introduction to the story, some Greeks uh, who were in Jerusalem for the festival, probably they were Jewish Greeks. Nevertheless, they are people who would have found themselves on the outside, on the outskirts of the temple, people who weren't really included in the faith. And so they're in Jerusalem, they've probably heard about Jesus, and now they want to see him. Instead of going directly to Jesus, they go to his disciples, probably people who also were, were Gentiles or, or more allied to the Gentile world, people who would have understood where they were coming from. And they come with an interesting question. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And I wonder if that's not a question we can sit with this evening. Uh, Sir, I would like to see Jesus. I wonder if 
there are circumstances in your life where you would like to see Jesus. Maybe as I mentioned yesterday, in the midst of our, uh, our triumph, we find those moments of tragedy, like a sudden diagnosis of an illness or, or whatever it is. And, and in that, to say, in this situation, I would like to see Jesus. I want to see, I need to see Jesus in this place of tragedy because I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to cope. I don't know how I'm going to carry on. Uh, where do I find Jesus? I think probably there also are some parts of our lives where we wouldn't like Jesus to be present very much. Uh, but this evening, let's focus on the places where we do need Jesus. Uh, and, uh, and so the, the disciples go to Jesus with this request. And, and Jesus answers in a strange way. Jesus doesn't say, well, here I am. Let's have a conversation. Uh, what do you want to ask me? What do you need from me? As has happened in many cases in the Gospels. Jesus says, essentially, uh, and this is a frightening passage. Jesus says, if you want to see me, you have to die. Now, I'm sure we all would expect to see Jesus if we, if we follow Jesus, if we love Jesus, if we've made a commitment. I'm sure we would all expect to see Jesus when we, when we leave this world. Um, but I think Jesus is saying something a little bit uh, more difficult, perhaps. Jesus is saying, if you want to see my presence, you have to die to yourself. All those things that you are worried about, you need to allow them to die. All those claims that you have to power and possession and prestige, you, you find yourself in a situation, for example, you've got the, the, the bad news of, of being retrenched and you're saying, Jesus, I need you in this situation. And maybe Jesus is saying, trust in me. Put, put your desire to be in control, your desire to sort out your life, put, put it to death so that you can trust in me. Um, maybe in the midst of your, your illness, Jesus is saying, stop, stop, trying to, stop trying to make yourself better. I don't mean stop going to doctors. But, but, but Jesus is saying, if you want to see my presence, trust in me. And, and I think that's a helpful way to, to look at the gospel and, and what Jesus' presence is about, especially as we find ourselves in this time between triumph and tragedy. Uh, there's this lovely passage in Scripture um, where, where Jesus is talking to God. Um, and he says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. And that often is, is our cry when we're going through times of difficulty, times of tragedy. Father, save me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, why aren't you here? And Jesus says, Is this what I should say? And he says, No. It was for this very reason that I came to this hour. And he speaks about how he is going to be glorified through the tragedy which he is to face. And I think if we are to embrace the times of tragedy, the times of fear, the times of uncertainty in our lives with Jesus, following Jesus, I think it's helpful for us to do our best to do the same. I know it's incredibly difficult when we're losing everything to trust in, to really trust in Jesus. Um, but maybe we need to say, let's stop crying out for Jesus to save us from the circumstances and to save us uh, from what's happening, to save us from the hour, um, but to embrace the hour as a part of God's plan for our lives, to embrace the hour as a time when we can encounter Jesus in a new way, when we can see Jesus that we long to see in those circumstances. Uh, Jesus says very clearly, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life will keep it eternally. Whoever serves me must follow me. Uh, and as we seek to follow Jesus, as we've been doing that, uh, I think we need to learn to embrace the cross, to embrace the death that Jesus offers to us, so that Jesus may be glorified in our lives. Friends, it's a hard teaching. Um, but maybe one we need to hear, especially in these times when everything is changing and we want so badly to cling on to the things that we knew in the past. I pray that as we lose everything, we can discover and embrace Jesus and the glory that he offers to us. Amen.